Welcome to the History of the Batman with London, brought to you by Meltdown Comics and Collectibles in Hollywood, California. This is where we relive the defining moments of one of the most iconic figures in comic, art, and literature, the Batman. My name is Adam Silverstein, a.k.a. Wednesday's Finest. And as always, I am joined by London. From the shadows, we are joined by that mysterious man of mystery, Shadow Adam. History of the Batman with London is produced and engineered by Mason Booker. Just like to let you know that we have here at Meltdown, Meltdown University. This is the school at the store where they teach you the skills to make comic books. Some of the current classes include creating comics, drawing comics for kids, and the art of inking. There's always new classes, so please check out MeltComics.com. Go to the Meltdown University area, click it, and it will tell you everything you need to know. Enroll now before the show or before the classes fill up. Also, want you to check out some other podcasts by the Meltdown Network. We've got the Disney Click and a new incredible one, Pod Sequentialism with Matt Kennedy. Also, you can check out Meltcast 3.0. That's where the clerks here just get nuts. Anyway, we are here to talk about Batman. And as that would be the case, we are here with London. London, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I enjoyed our podcast last week with the ranker list about the bat suits. Yeah, that was fun. I wonder if the list changed. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't checked. <laughs> I'll have to check. But yeah, that was good. I like that I was actually changing it while I was talking. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I've talked to a few of the followers, listeners, and they agree with the number one bat suit. Really? A lot of them did. Yeah, they said that Jim Lee's hush, they they agree with it. So ah. can't be that off. <laughs> there you go. Any of those particular people that you want to shout out? Uh, they're all on the they're all on Instagram. Okay. And so but I'm glad that they listened in to the episode. So, I got you. So thank well, you, everyone that listens. Thank you. <laughs> it's very nice to have them. All right. Well, you know, last week, the bat suit. I cannot wait to hear what we're talking about this week. Well, Tell the listeners. <laughs> well, next week is a big week for Batman because the first issue of Frank Miller's Dark Knight 3 The Master Race is out and oh yeah that's everyone has been anticipating that book so this episode is going to be kind of a preparation for dk3 we are going to discuss the other two books within this series frank miller's batman the dark knight returns and frank miller's the dark knight strikes again now this is an Elseworlds title, correct? Right. It's alternate universe. It's within Earth-31, technically, but it's in the Dark Knight universe. Got so it. it is technically in Elseworlds, even though it wasn't labeled at the time. See, how do you mm-hmm. like that? I asked that question, and the only reason I'm asking that question is because of the previous podcast we did about Elseworlds. <laughs> I'm learning something and actually retaining it. <laughs> So it is Elseworlds. It's outside the continuity. Right. And, I mean, how do you, pre- other, I mean, what do you do to prepare for DK3? Is it okay to abbreviate? Is yeah. Is that what everyone's doing? Yeah. Everyone's calling it DK3, so okay. that's fine. <laughs> All right. I didn't want to sound a little cheesy. You know? <laughs> I'm well, not a big person who likes to abbreviate. I, I never type LOL. I, don't, I will never <laughs> type it. I just don't like to abbreviate. I just think some of it is cheesy. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that if I am abbreviating DK3, you won't think less of me. No, it's okay. Because all the books we're talking about, they abbreviate as DKR and DK2. Oh. So it, it all falls into place. <laughs> all right. So how do you prepare? Other than reading 
I mean, I guess that's what you should do. Yeah. Is that the number one that recommendation? That is the number one recommendation. If you listen to this podcast and you want to read what we're talking about, that's definitely my recommendation to read the four issue arc and the three issue arc. Because right now, even with a week before the book comes out, we really don't know what the series is going to be about. DC has been very almost secretive with withholding details about the actual storyline. Is it safe to assume that it will be a continuation of the prior two stories, or are they going to go totally off? I would think... Make an Elseworlds Elseworlds. (laughs) I would think that they will keep some of the elements from both books or I don't know if it's going to be right after the ending of the Dark Knight Strikes Again. Not really sure, but I think the major characters that are in these two arcs will definitely make appearances Mm. in this series, which is interesting, especially talking about characters like Carrie Kelly and people think that she may be a different she she may be taking up the role as Batman in this universe or oh some boy. I mean there are different theories and things like that but I think that the same characters the major characters Batman will probably see Superman probably see Carrie Kelly and will be in this series but I'm excited about the creative teams because it sounds great it's Frank Miller and Brian Azzarello are writing it and Klaus Jansen and Andy Cooper are drawing the regular series. It's a it's going to be a eight issue book. It's bi monthly, I believe, or bi weekly. Okay. And and then there will be many comics within the issues. So you'll have a ro- you can you'll have a rotating team of different artists coming in, and it should be really good. So I think the best way, of course, to prepare. For the book, if you are have no idea what DK3 is about, is to read the books that are going to be following it. It's They're calling it the conclusion to this Miller series. So I would assume that it's going to draw off of these two arcs just because they call it the conclusion. So hopefully it won't be an Elseworlds and an Elseworlds. It right. may just be wrapping up this story which i was surprised that they were doing that right. anyway in well, a sense and it's <laughs> it's also interesting that you say wrapping up which assumes that there was this master plan you know yeah is that is this a is it i guess what i'm asking is this a function of frank miller is the man he's got such credibility and whatever we do as a DC comics, we need to get him to come back and do something. It's it's a huge event. Yes. And so let's get him back and he can play in his own universe. Or is it like Star Wars where they had the, you know, the New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, but George Lucas had always planned to have it as a nine movie arc i think that it's a it's a little bit of both perhaps i think anytime frank miller wants to come on a project especially dealing with batman with the success of the dark knight returns and what that did for dc and the american comic book itself just having frank miller on a new book is thrilling i think to any fans especially of batman and it's and I I am looking forward to seeing what he's going to bring to this so-called conclusion. What story it, he's creating to, yeah, like I said, in a way, wrap up or end this iconic tale of these characters within this world. And then I'm excited about the mini comics that are coming with it because. He even said, along with uh, Jim Lee, that they might add a story to All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, which is within the Dark Knight universe. Your guilty pleasure. Yes, my guilty pleasure. I love that series. And that that technically didn't have an ending, so 
I'm excited to see if a story comes from that. And I think just Frank Miller in general, just ha- him wanting to come back and do Batman, I don't think DC could have said no or wanted to. I think that, um, and that's proven in the many, many variants and covers that have been added to Dark Knight 3, and we have, and which I find fascinating because it's all based off of Dark Knight Returns, Dark Knight Strikes Again, and and the characters within that those stories, and we still don't know what's going to happen in this story, but I've read that there are over 30 different variants for issue number one for Dark Knight 3, and just artists in general have been so excited to even contribute to this this Batman mythos that there have there have been over I think I read 70 different covers just in general created for this series so wow. so I think just the fact of being involved with Frank Miller's Batman work and anything with the Dark Knight Returns because it is a classic tale is just exciting for any creator that's that's that enjoys Batman. Do you know the story about what brought Frank Miller back? I don't know the exact story. Do you know what the hearsay story What's is? What's the hearsay story? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, some had to bring him back. I mean, it's not like Frank Miller's putting out a ton of comics right now. No, but I've read a, a couple of interviews with the with the co-publishers of DC and they just said that he had an interest to returning to the story and they couldn't say no. Right. So, so he approached them or do you know, or they just kept on asking him and finally he said, you know, maybe I do. I think they had been juggling around with the idea of coming back to the story for a year or two. This wasn't just something automatic and, I think they came up with an idea and said, okay, let's go for it. So, and it's interesting because with a lot of different Frank Miller projects, they're kind of spread out. (laughs) We've seen in different books and stories. So I think he has been working on this for a little while and they finally decided to just strike and go forward with it. So I think they they probably approached him, but then he had some ideas they mold around with it, and then he finally said, okay, let's do this. Yeah. So well, I think it was a joint effort to get this new story out, well, and they're making it the, the last one. Yeah, so. I think that would be a cool interview to have Frank Miller on this show here <laughs> and ask him yeah. what happened. It definitely. <laughs> what I'm takes curious. it so long? Yeah, that, lots of different questions I'd have for Frank Miller about, particularly about his Batman. But he's done so much. It's he's done Daredevil. Which oh, yeah. do you like his? Oh my God! Daredevil? I mean, that is to me <laughs> that is the defining Frank Miller story. And, yeah, and and I say that because that set the foundation for him to actually do Batman. I mean, right. without him honing his craft. And really striking a, I don't know, a, just the right chord with Daredevil. I mean, he, you know, he started off as just an artist on Daredevil and then right. got into the writing a- aspect of it and then was writing and drawing. And he really just hit his stride and nailed it. I mean, that whole Electra and Bullseye. It's the define and ninjas. I mean, that that right. drove me yeah. right there. And that <laughs> was I said to myself, This is the this is my favorite comic. And my kids were actually asking me today, they like to always ask me what I like more. Could <laughs> you know, could would you want the Steelers to win ten Super Bowls or do you want the Clippers to win at least one championship? And they always <laughs> want to know what I like. And so they were asking me today. What do you like better, Daredevil or the Ninja Turtles? <laughs> Daredevil or Usagi Ojimbo? You know, these are all my favorite things. They just want to know. So that's, and that's because of Frank Miller, because of Frank Miller's Daredevil. And when you really think about Frank Miller, I mean, the Ninja Turtles are essentially their backstories and uh, 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 pays homage to Frank Miller. Right. 
I mean, I don't know if many people know this, but the Ninja Turtles uh, Splinter is named after Stick. And Stick, oh. yeah, well, yeah, now you didn't know <laughs> I that. I didn't know that. So, so Stick <laughs> is Daredevil's mentor. And so what do you get from a stick? A splinter. Nice. And that's where Splinter came. <laughs> and then, you know, the story of how the turtles got draped in ooze is because after Daredevil or Matt Murdock saved the blind man from a truck that had toxic waste, the the toxic waste jar that ended up striking Matt Murdock in the eyes and blinding him kept on bouncing down the road and while there was this kid holding a bowl of baby turtles it knocked the bowl and (laughs) he happened to be standing over an open manhole cover so all the turtles and the ooze went down into the sewer and that's what happened so daredevil's blinding ooze or waste toxic waste was actually then the ooze from the ninja turtles that's crazy i i didn't know you didn't know that either i didn't oh my god (laughs) that's great i'm actually teaching you something for once that's (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) yeah and so you know that it was it was kevin eastman and peter laird they just loved frank miller's daredevil and so that's where a lot of that came from. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> well, there you go. I, I love the fact that I actually taught you something. That's so amazing. But then once Frank Miller was done with Daredevil, the next thing that he really conquered was Batman. And so, yeah, it, it just... And what year was this? What year did the first Dark Knight came in? That was 86? That was 86. So... 86, then when's the, st- the strikes again? That comes out in 2002. So oh. it's like a 15-year gap. <laughs> yeah. And now we're on basically another 15-year another. <laughs> gap. Yeah, 15-year gap. I mean, it's not a 15-year gap. Ra- it's 13 about, year, yeah. but still. But it's about the same. So, that's, so the timing seems... <laughs> the timing seems right, but... I'm excited that they're doing inclusion at yeah. all. But yeah, I think that since we don't really know so much about what next week's first issue is going to bring, DC has put out a couple panels, but you, you can't really get a story out of that. Right. That if you want to get prepared, you should read these two arcs that we're going to talk about in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually got very excited about it, and I started to read... Um, the Dark Knight, and I got through the first two issues, nice. and I and I need to get through three and four. But uh, I guess you'll tell me a little bit about yeah. what I forgot. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go through each of the issues and just start it. And of course, we'll just start off with with the Dark Knight Returns. And by the way, if there's any listeners out there who say that this is why are we spoiling it? Well, you've had about. <laughs> between both of them pretty much 20 some years right plus to read these things so if you haven't read it uh we're not spoiling right. it it's we're not, refreshing it right for you. it's not i mean it, this is not supposed to replace people reading the book if you haven't read either of these stories or you haven't read them in years it's just to get you a little excited maybe to go pick it up yourself go to your local comic book shop or wherever and and read it yourself because any of these episodes anything that we talk about on here whether it's a comic or a movie or anything it's it'll never be the same as actually you reading it or you watching it so yeah it's not meant to be a spoiler and and, and always you know if this (laughs) stuff is out there it's it's gonna be you're gonna we're going to spoil it a little bit <laughs> because it's been out there for so long. I right. mean, they tell you that Bane broke Batman's back. You know, that's kind of a spoiler, but it's a fact. Everyone knows it. So, you know, calm down on that if you're all 
uppity about the spoil alert. I saw somebody <laughs> say something. And I was like, are you I kidding see. me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get that sometimes when I talk about comics and it's a big Batman store and they're like, oh, I haven't read it. And even though it's 30 years old. Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because this really would be the shortest podcast of all. <laughs> I don't know if it's a spoiler. I'm not sure. But that okay. is definitely not the intention to ruin. Because I don't think even with this, you can ruin the experience. If you go back. So if we talk about issues three and four, you going and reading issues three and four, it's, it's not going to, I don't think, ruin the that experience for you rereading it again. Yeah. Well, getting into <laughs> the Dark Knight then. If that's where we're going, yep, that's, we're going. That's, that's where we're going. I will say, I re- when I read the first two issues again, I mean, first of all, they're long. Yes. Each issue <laughs> is long. It's not a 22-page quick read-through. Right. It is some, in, you know, you've got to pay attention. And it's interesting because each of, there's four, there's four issues, but each of the stories, even though it all links together, it's all its own a little bit. It's all its own story. It all focuses on a different aspect of Batman returning. So it's right. it so yeah, they're all mini they're all just mini stories within their own, right? Right. So yeah. I also think what was interesting that I noticed is just the way uh Frank Miller told the story with mm-hmm. so much on the media. You know, right. focus on the media. You know, most of just the overall you, I mean, you fill in a lot of blanks with your imagination because the media is talking and reporting on different right. things. And I just thought that was actually really cool. Right, the the reporters and media and TV and just how the paneling is like sixteen panel pages, which hadn't been seen before, right, at all, <laughs> anything of the sort, and. And even just the way that the book is formatted, where now you see more pages that have, it's a splash page where it's just one thing or it's like three different panels. It's just layered with so much. But yeah, I like the fact that the stories are media and the reporters kind of are driving the story. Oh, yeah. Kind of, especially when Batman comes back and then they talk about that and then they have the psychiatrist on there and it's yeah. and, and you kind of read it and... You think about it yourself and see how Batman is within this Gotham. And yeah, it, the way that it was formatted for Frank Miller's writing played brilliantly with telling the story, definitely. Right. And the art itself was great because Klaus Jansen did the pencils and Lynn Verley did the inks and John Costanza did the, co- did the colors and letters and... The art all together, I think, with Miller's work or his writing, it just all presented a really great story. And the fact that it's in an alternate universe, because at the time, you didn't really see much of that. You saw a few imaginary stories, but the, even the type of Elseworld didn't even come until Gotham by Gaslight in 89. So this concept of, oh, we're... 20 years into the future and looking at Gotham in this way. And I think Frank Miller, he wanted to make his Batman older. He wanted to see how he would function or how Batman or Bruce Wayne would be as an older hero. And the fact that he's retired and all of that, it's just, it was just at the time an interesting look into Batman itself because you didn't see that type of Batman at all at, in 86 or in the 80s. Right. Did you? I'm coming in. Yay. Well, obviously <laughs> you're coming in. You're speaking. That's, what's up? That's Mason Hi, Booker. Mason. Everybody. Hey, what's happening? <laughs> um, did you hear, like, did you read or come across, like, the origin, like, where they got the idea, where Frank Miller got the idea for this? For? For Dark Knight Returns? Um, I think it was... <laughs> I think I did read it somewhere, but he was he was on a plane or whatever, mm-hmm. and I guess he was talking with one of his comic book people, and they were like, "What what did, what is Batman's last case like? Like what it what what's his last case going to be?" And Frank Miller was like, "Man, that's a great concept. <laughs> like I want to write that." And so that's the germ. 
The, look at, look the at the way Mason just did that, though. <laughs> he, he totally asks you, and then he, he knew you might not know, so he could just come in. <laughs> well, it's so rare. It's and, so rare but that, that, that is you come in. No, I know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, I'm like also, what? Also, like what? Also dark. Like what? Like this. <laughs> also, Dark Knight um, is one of my faves of nice. all time. So, Why is it one of your favorites? Oh, man, that's a heavy question. <laughs> um, I got to go with, as a young reader, mm-hmm. uh, Superman and Batman are essentially immortal in in my, especially then, 86, like kid, right. kid mind, you know, they're always going to come out on top. There's no... There's no real worry about it. Like they're never gonna die, and they're always young, and they're always strong, and they're always beautiful. And and here was a way. You're like, no, Batman's getting old. Batman's like, you know, not gonna make it. This this is it. Like he his body's breaking down, but he's. He, and I think and it and it spoke to me because I was so young, and I was like, I'm so young and so vibrant and so alive. <laughs> and I and I would see elements of what was going on with Batman uh, mirrored at the time in my grandfather. Cause my grandfather, he was, he came over on the boat, didn't know this English. Is deep man. Yeah. I know. Like he, he didn't know English. He learned English from the radio. He like worked his way up, went to Georgetown university on scholarship through football, like made it, he's a he's legit self-made man. Anyway. And so I would see this, these similar kind of expressions through, through the art of Batman realizing that at one point he was young and he could, you know, take out these punks and he could, you know, save the city and he could do it. But now his body is betraying him right. and he's old and he's, you know, looking out the window and he's like, do I have it? Do I have what it takes? And I would see similar things like that with my grandfather who was, you know, aging at that point. And like, so he you was, started seeing your grandfather as Batman. Well, <laughs> as as Bruce Wayne, okay. wishing he was it's like his still, body and his mind weren't matching. Yeah, and it was frustrating yeah, almost. Yeah, <laughs> wishing he could still be Batman. Wishing he right. could still say. And one of my favorite <laughs> sequences in that comic is he, Bruce Wayne. At that point, he's just a trench coat because he's retired, and he goes out and deliberately picks a fight with a bunch of young punks yes. because he just wants to prove that he could still do <laughs> it. And uh, and he does, you know. <laughs> and I was just like, man, this is this is great, like because I because I didn't know what was going to happen because it was an Elseworlds, and you know that th- is very clearly a standalone. So maybe he didn't make it, or at least something significant could happen to him, you right. know. And then uh, and it was just eye opening. It was it was kind of this dust in the wind, man. We're all dust in the wind. <laughs> Like, you know, so, the, ma- the mountains become the sand. So how do you read it the first time? Did you read each issue? Was it, uh, no, it collected? Was a, yeah, it was given to me in a in a collected. So it was in 86. Then. No, it, I guess it was 88 Okay, or whatever. But same same principle applies. I anyway, gotcha. but yeah, it was. Just checking your dates. Realizing, <laughs> realizing the mortality of one of your heroes is, is, you know, it stayed with me. And I was like, very brave, Frank Miller. Very, very um, new to me. Right. And I think it was new to everybody or that audience because you didn't see Batman old or weak or he always won every fight. And here, I, there are instances where he goes up against someone, especially when we talk about the mutant leader, and he just gets destroyed. He almost dies. That and really- when you see things like that, you're especially then you're like wow that's i mean that's something new for batman that really that really blew me away that yeah. whole that whole sequence where he's mm-hmm. like i'm challenged because they build it up they're like right. he's coming it's ha- it's happening it's a one-on-one and he's like yeah. i'm gonna win this i'm gonna take back the city and then he just gets plastered like just <laughs> hard that in the mud the yeah mud fight? yeah they they fight him in the um and it's like a junkyard or something. Yeah, that's in book two. Like they fight twice. They fight the first time, right. and and he and I think he thinks, oh yeah, I can take this guy. And then that's when he is near yeah. death. You and know, then I, I thought that I thought that was pretty irresponsible. I mean, I also think of Batman as a man who's got not only the ability but a plan. He's always got a backup plan to a backup plan to a backup plan, and he went in that fight 
against the mutant leader right. with no plan, no backup <laughs> plan other than I'm going to fight. Yeah, but this is the thing. And this is, I think, he was due to his old age and he, his wanting to reclaim the power of his youth so bad that he was he fell victim to hubris. He yeah. was like, yes. he was like, I'm Batman. I can't lose. And then he, you know, got yeah, wasted. I, I still, no, I no, guess. No. I but that's an old man thinking, probably. Yeah, and that's maybe that right. is the character. But I still would think that at that moment he, he would have prepped a little, prepped more. a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, it was. Well, you he, know, he was he was surrounded not only by the mutant leader. Or, I mean, by the mutant gang. But then he's fighting the mutant leader. Right. If he ends I, up killing the mutant leader or beating him up, he's got to deal with a whole gang. Yeah, the first fight, I think he went in, and I think after fighting. A couple of people like on the streets and things like that, and then he came. He officially came back, and the news reporter saying, "Oh, the Batman has returned," and he wanted to take on the mutant gang who was just like killings and all kinds of horrible things. I think he was trying to channel that Batman he's always been before he retired, and and like I said, the mind and the body weren't matching well, i think his spirit of being batman in his 20s and 30s was there and and yet he wanted to prove to himself he wanted to prove to alfred and he just wanted to show that i'm still batman right. but that first fight yeah definitely showed that he went in just oh and, and just, also well Real, uh, real yeah. quick. Re I think we just need to rewind real quick in I know. case there's someone. <laughs> we're, we're totally jumping in, and <laughs> in case there's someone who hasn't read this. Okay. Basically, the future of Gotham and the DC universe is people are totally messed up, right? And there it's is a lack of the heroes, supposedly right. that any of the cities had. You don't have the Supermans and the Wonder Womans, and if all you can that. imagine the Bronx in the early 70s it's just a, a <laughs> war it is torn. a right it is a very dark and bleak gotham way more than batman was in in his heyday right and, for sure and so bruce wayne gets this affects him like right what has happened to my city right because it's 20 years into the future and and now he's 55 it says and he's been 10 years retired and he retired because the second Robin, Jason Todd, was killed by the Joker, which coincidentally, this happened a few years later in A Death in the Family. People think that it's planned and everything, but I really think it's just coincidence. And it could have been they were inspired by that plot line and all of that. But he's retired. He hasn't been Batman or crime fighting or anything for 10 years, but he sees all of the, he sees the mutant gang coming and just Gotham just in a horrible place. Right, it's and the just... mutant gang have have essentially taken crime to the next level. Right. These are the worst of the worst. They're pretty much running the city. Right. And just no, no remorse one's, for and no killings. One's stopping and, them. Right, and no one can stop them. And they're just running amok. And that's all the news is filled with. And that, of course, affects Bruce in a sense. And then... What I love, and this is this is in the first book. This is all introduced in book one, which I think is called The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, they show his origin story again. And I know that you always see the origin story of the the Mask of Zorro, the Mark of Zorro, or be depending. And then you go to Crime Alley, and then his parents are gunned down by a mugger. But the way that this paneling is is kind of... 16 almost you can have up to 16 panels on a page the way that bruce remembers this his technically his origin is is drawn beautifully i think and once he has that memory and then he sees all the crime and corruption happening you have that great panel of of course a bat flying into his office once again and he feels like okay now i have to come back and be Batman because Gotham needs Batman. I think he feels not just that he wants to prove to himself that he can come back as Batman, but he sees Gotham as in such peril. Right. And Gotham's in such a bad state right now. Right. And, and this mutant leader is on air saying, I'm going to kill James Gordon. I'm going to kill Batman. And he's right. issuing threats, and it's getting out of hand. Right, and what's also... Um, 
great to notice. It's not just all that happening, but Bruce Wayne just helped the rehabilitation of Harvey Dent, and he did the reconstruction of his face, so he doesn't he doesn't look like Two Face anymore. And so, of course, he felt that I think in a way, if he can help Two Face get rid of or Harvey didn't get rid of that side of Two-Face, that kind of inner demon that he has, then maybe he can get rid of his own inner demons. But that all changes when Two-Face comes back. Harvey Dent is now doing bad things. And is and so I think all of that combined, Bruce feels like, okay, I have to come back as Batman. I need to help. Because he always has felt like, I need to help Harvey. That's always kind of been a theme anytime Two-Face and Batman are in a story. He always feels like, oh, I can help my friend. I can help him come back to not being have, having this split personality, this good versus bad or this good or bad. And so a lot of different elements make him come out of retirement because it's 10 years. That's a really long span of time. If you think yeah. about it. It's like... It, and yeah, and like you said, he he he's aged. He's fifty five. He hasn't been fighting, and it's a really big step to coming back to all of that fighting and being Batman. Because being Batman, that takes a lot out of you. Yeah, but this is the, like I think <laughs> one of the things that I love so much about this uh, series is that it's one of the themes is kind of like you can't hide who you really are, right? And it and it goes through all of them, you know, two face and the and the Joker and, and, and especially Batman, like he you know, they try to repress it, they try to fight their true nature, they try to drown it or whatever. But in the end it comes. Right. It, you know, it's unstoppable. It can't stop. And and I think that is epitomized in um when the bat flies into the window again, because exactly. he's like, "Oh, I've, I've, I've not, I've been it for so long. I can do it. I can make it." And then all of a sudden, the bat just like explodes in, and is like, "No, no, I'm your true form." <laughs> and he's like, "Ah, I love it." <laughs> I also really like, um, and I was gonna mention this before. He, it opens, and um, Bruce Wayne is reflecting on like, oh, "I wish I need to save her. Like she's in trouble." And and you see these pearls, the pearl necklace. Right, and you think he's talking about his mom, and he's like, oh, if, you know, it, it's it's uh, I'm too weak now. I can't save her. I can't do it. Blah blah blah. And it turns out he's talking about Gotham City, and I, that always struck me too that he views the city as basically his his parents. Like exactly. You know. I mean, one he feels that he needs to avenge their death in a sense, but then as as the years go on, you see Batman develop. You see he's really trying to stop the person who took his parents away, like those people that represent the bad in Gotham and he needs to stop that. And so that's why he feels like Gotham is his city and he's very territorial of that. And but I got to so, give it to him. Like he's right. Like, yeah. <laughs> when, when he goes away, everything just falls right. apart. Like he was the one that it's was like keeping total it destruction. And even though some of the, po- and now when he comes back, it's worse because Gordon's retiring, and so no one's on his side. He doesn't have any of the GCPD. It's So he's literally alone. And so he goes into this completely different and worse Gotham. And like you said, it's all about identity, I think, with a lot of these characters. And he has to deal with him being Bruce Wayne. He's aged. He's retired to being Batman. And he definitely lets Batman take over all of it. It's, it's a very black and white kind of situation. You're either Bruce Wayne, retired, or you're Batman. And he wants to be Batman, even though he has tons of limitations now that weren't there before. So, yeah, it's this. the first book is, is pretty heavy, just introducing Bruce aged and coming back, showing Harvey reverting back as Two-Face. And at this point, you still don't really know why he's turning back into two face and then and then what's the best i i love is that joker who is in the arkham rehabilitation center now yeah. <laughs> he's he's in like this canatonic state and then once he sees him and talk he's being talked about on tv 
he's starting to snap out of it because he sees that Batman is back. And, of course, if Batman's there, that means Joker has to be there. And it's, of course, illustrating that relationship, which yeah, is awesome. That, that was by far one of my absolute favorite parts. You you were talking earlier about the media and how the media is kind of guiding the story. And right. And that's exactly what I thought of was that the newscast is broad. Broadca- the newscast is broadcast into the Arkham Asylum, I guess is where yeah. he is. And he's he's literally just sitting there like totally peaceful, like catatonic because his his raison d'être, his <laughs> his reason for living is is gone. Is gone. And all of a sudden right. they're like, We think Batman's back. And then all of a sudden you <laughs> see him like, What, Batman? Like and right. he, he, it starts going. And, it, and I love that. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. just that's just very right. symbiotic relationship between those two. Right. One day you'll you'll have to explore that in depth, <laughs> London. Yes, that that can be a whole episode. <laughs> uh, the, the bromance. <laughs> um, and then you learn that Two Face he thinks for him that his face isn't completely Harvey Dent. That it's they're both sides are deformed almost. That's like his mind. It's it's kind of you discover that. Harvey Dent will always be Two Face. It's just all bad. It's that's his identity that he's taken up ever since the tragic accident. And Batman, Bruce Wayne, no one can really save him from that fate. So, this, this yeah, I think it goes to what is your what do you feel your true nature is, and can you stop from embracing it? Right. If you think that way, it's it, it's common. It, right. It's common. Anyway. Yeah, so that's really, yeah. And then you go on to the second book, and then that comes into, it's The Dark Knight Triumphant, and that deals more with Batman dealing with the mutant gang and the mutant leader. And and her, her introduction to... Um, and then you get more of a Kelly, Carrie Kelly as Robin, because yeah. he saves her in the first one, but you only see her for a second. But then she's so inspired by that that she gets the Robin costume and she's like, I'm going to be Robin, which I I kind of liked that. I think, oh, that's pretty cool. But then again, it's like, you don't have the training. <laughs> and, yeah. and I've always felt weird about that. It's and, and of course, she's the first technically girl Robin and everyone loves that. And I love that too, of course. I'm I'm all for that. But I always feared, especially anytime I reread it, I'm always like, ah, she, and she eventually helps Batman and everything, but she can't she just get like flicked or thrown somewhere and she's just out for the count? Just as much as Batman's old age, her inexperience in a way in this right. can kind of no, be the same. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you completely. Uh, here's two reasons I like Carrie Kelly. One, um, the language, the punk speak, right. like she introduces it and it's really, really cool. Yeah. Like, you know, it took you and, and it was another element to build this world. But I will say this, desperate times call for desperate measures. Like Batman was desperate. Right. He was, he was like, I've, I've got to do everything I possibly can. And Carrie Kelly was his only option. Right. Well, but hold on. So I, I still didn't follow what got Carrie Kelly to decide that she wanted to even do this. Like, what was her motivation? Well, in the first book, when Batman is out just on the streets beating up people, he saves her life from being uh. attacked, pretty much. And so that inspires her to want to go out and help Batman. So it's, it's, it's she was teen just, idol. Ah, uh, yeah. It's kind of like it was a, a it's, it's, it's a little bit of a well, also, Batgirl thing where in some stories, like like Babs, Barbara Gordon, she was inspired to see Batman, like in the later post crisis stories that they had of it her. Just it so just happened so fast from the moment she was saved to the moment she became like, Robin. Boom. It's like, <laughs> I think that was one issue. Or Yeah. But <laughs> what, wasn't she also like kind of living at home in a bad situation? Oh, yeah. And like bored her parents, out of her mind? Right. Her parents were totally neglectful. They didn't care about her. Yeah. And so it was like, what else is there to do? I'm just going to go be. I think, it, yeah, I think part of it was youthful <laughs> rebellion. She was uh, like, nobody even cares about her. Yeah, no I one do. cares about her. Her parents were definitely not involved so they illustrated that in the book so sure it's after being saved by this this guy and you're like oh well maybe i should go and do that too and help and so 
she puts on the costume and she kind of follows him a little bit, right? She kind yeah. of follows him and yeah. then at one and then he decides, "Oh, I'm just going to go after the mutant leader." And that's when they fight and he's just getting pummeled and she's there and she's hiding and she can see that. She's kind of hiding around where the Batmobile or the tank. That's that's and that that's another thing. That's the first time you see the Batmobile, which is literally a military tank. Right. <laughs> and a, a new a new design. <laughs> right. It's it's a, technically a new design. You don't see him with a tank anywhere else. So that by itself is new. And and but then he, it's a good way to illustrate just how far things have gone. The fact right. that he had to design that level of of tech. right. And if and if you see that and just. And his suit at this point is still just like the regular bat suit, but the fact that he has this tank, it just shows how much protection he needs. Right, because he's frail. Right, because yeah. and he knows that he's frail, but then he still has the spirit of, oh yeah, I, I'm the Batman that I was 20 years ago. Like, right. I, and so it's interesting to see what gadgets and tech that he has that shows the way that he really is to where his, and then the thought bubbles and the way that he talks, he's like, oh, he's just like, no, I'm, I'm Batman. I'm the one that I've always been and I haven't changed. And also the, the setting, the, the world seems to back him up because the more he embraces being Batman, the more like all the old stuff kind of comes back. Like Two-Face kind of drifts into the dark side. Joker starts coming back. And the bat flies in the window. And I think um, I think he's like near death when he first sees Carrie Kelly or something. And he's yeah. like, of course, Robin, you're back. Right. Like and and that's returned. the thing. But like you said, desperate times call for desperate measures. Because at first, Alfred's like, um, we should not let her know what's going on right, right now. Right. Yeah. And you really want to come back to the Batcave? And it's a little like, are you sure? But I think he was like, well, yeah, like you said, seeing the, her and the Robin, it's like, have Robin again. Yeah, and like it's fate. Yeah, it's yeah. fate. So, yeah, and then the second book, it's, yeah, it starts, and then you're introduced to the new commissioner that's going to be taken over, and she is not on Batman's side at all because there are critics where they're like, oh, it's so, it's so awesome that Batman's back because now we have someone to help get Gotham out of this gutter but then there are other people that are like well he just beats them up and leaves them on the streets like don't they have rights and and so there's he's a vigilante right he's a vigilante so the criticisms are mixed and you learn that the new commissioner is different from Gordon where Gordon's been commissioner for years and knows okay you need Batman but she's like no the vigilante thing is is not okay so, but yeah, I think the first fight with the mutant leader, it, it it totally went astray. But then he plans another meet kind of with Gordon. And then that's when you have him fighting the mutant leader in front of his whole gang in this mud pit. And they're going at it. And then Batman just comes with blows. And eventually he cripples him in front of his gang and that's of course a psychological play yeah, because I mean, those the 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 gang are made up of teenagers that just kind of are almost following the pack and it's, they all <laughs> wear these goofy glasses right they're yeah, like, like cyclops these, like yeah these like red almost visor type glasses and but i think once he once they see that batman has taken down their leader most of them, not all of them, but most of them turn and want to be on Batman's side and they call themselves the Sons of Batman. Yeah, they paint their faces. Right. And so, and just looking at the mutant gang itself, it's, they're just violent kids running around the streets, but then they turn to Batman and want to be on Batman's side. And of course, the more that and then once the Sons of Batman come on TV and the media, everything, that's when Joker's like, oh, he's back. And so he's full on smiling and happy. And I love that he called him darling because that just epitomizes their relationship yeah. to me. But well, yeah. there's there's no Harley Quinn in this one. There's yes, there is no Harley Quinn. So it but this relationship, the Batman, the Joker relationship is totally it 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 still resonates today. It's still one of the best and most complex relationships within the within the DC mythos. And that kind of 
leads right into book three, I think. It's uh, the hunt for the Dark Knight. So once he has kind of started the Sons of Batman and he's out in the open and he's being him, the GCPD, the new commissioner, they're out to get him because they're like, we're not going to have any of this vigilante running around and it's a focus on that and it's also a focus on batman and joker's relationship pretty much right well it's also batman fully returning because he he goes out on his pride he gets knocked off his pedestal and then he's like oh i need to think exactly brush the cobwebs (laughs) off the brain and and he goes into the psych war like you were saying right and then it's he's so he's full batman and then a a new a new war (laughs) this is a new time and then you kind of look at joker and then you have the bartholomew wallop the psychiatrist that has who is not on batman's side who blames him for all of the bad things that joker has done and that he's kind of yeah that he was a very interesting character in this book because they've used his name and his him being in Arkham and other stories but this one it's like no it's Batman psychosis that made Joker crazy and he's the reason why he m- killed all these people and it's yeah. like oh okay so, no, but everybody was just like come on it's like um okay but, but he got, I think he gets his comeuppance pretty pretty severely again through the media exactly yeah, yeah and so then he wants to show that Joker not only is awake at this point, but then he puts him on that late night. It's kind of like a late night Letterman type show, and then of and then Joker fully comes back and kills murders everyone, the Murder. entire audience, the Bartholomew and the host, and ha- happily, happily, <laughs> right? And it's just so it's like even with a f- only a few days back, even less than that, probably Joker is still a homicidal maniac. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that uh, this series um, was, uh, especially at the time, the most violent I'd ever seen Joker, like the most chaotic. Right. You know. And especially since he was in a state of not doing anything. Right. And then once Batman's back, now it's like, oh, I'm going to kill like 200 people. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing. Because like, before, when I'd encountered the Joker in the in the comic books before, it was, right. you know, it was just kind of like, sniff my flower. Oh, uh, now you're gassed and you're right. a Joker face. Yeah. Or maybe acid on like one person. And yeah, like, it's like he'll do the Joker gas and then right. they die with a horrible grin on their yeah, face. But that and... was it. But this one, he was just like wanton violence, <laughs> <laughs> which I think Chris Nolan took direct inspiration from for Heath Ledger's, yeah. uh, you know, his thing. He oh, was just like, there's no rhyme or reason. I'm just here for chaos. Yeah, it's just death. all chaos. Yeah, it's just chaotic. There's there's no re- there there was no reason to kill all those people. Some men just want to see the world burn. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I got you. I'm with you. Rubies. <laughs> the children were playing with them in the field. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're getting into the movies. Anyway, but yeah, I'm with you. Right. And so as Joker does that, even though the SWAT and the commissioner Yindel are there, they're looking for Batman. They're trying to hunt for him. And they're so distracted with that. They're like, oh, Joker... Even though back, back, I think Batman knew, like, oh, Joker's awake. He's here. Oh, he's going to do something awful. So that's why he was there. So in a way, it's like he was there to stop Joker. And then SWAT was there to stop Joker. But then she got so obsessed with, oh, Batman's here. We have to take him down. Another travesty happened. Boy, and then Two-Face is floating around in there, too. Right? right. Two-Face is there. And so it's... So it's like you said, everything is kind of back. Joker's doing stuff, Two Face doing stuff, and then Batman's there, and then he has Robin, and then he's he's a vigilante again, even though it's a whole different. It's like back to the old days. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it, it's almost as if Gotham wanted this, wanted it back. So it's it's allowing all these pieces right. to align. Yeah. <laughs> and Although uh, Two Face. He's alive at this point. I can't remember. Something happens where like there's some sort of big reveal with Two Face, right? Right. They right. Two Face is revealed that I mean he because at first he has bandages on his face, and so Batman doesn't know what's happening. But then when he takes off the bandages, his face is still normal. Because at first That's Batman right. thinks that oh maybe he deformed his face 
That's again. Right, he had the surgery and he looked great. And right. then he started flipping and he, right. he covered one half with bandages and everyone's like, oh man, did, uh, he, did he go back? Right. And he's like, oh, he went back and he's committing crimes but trying to, he's like asking for $2 million and things. And of course, anything with twos and but yeah. got the coin back too, right? Yeah. But the bad part is like with the coin, it's like they're both, they're scarred on both sides. That's right. <laughs> Way so, to go, Frank Miller. <laughs> Blew my so, mind. Right. So it's like he He's just completely, it's not even good or bad, or should I do this or that? It's its just all bad. <laughs> so Two-Face, it's, he, his fate is just sealed, I think. And that was really interesting because all the other, you, you kind of didn't see Two-Face really in a serious role yet. You don't really see him as a serious character. I mean, you kind of do in the 70s with... Neil Adams and Dennis O'Neill, but then you don't really see it till the 90s. So actually seeing Two-Face go fully rogue and yeah. there's no choice and it's just all bad it was a, a, probably the darkest Two-Face you saw, even though this is all alternate universe and everything. Yeah. But but then the rest of the issue, you come and Batman and, and Robin have to follow Joker and his men to this amusement park county fair place. And of course, because it's, it's, it's a Joker. It makes sense. So that's when Batman and Joker have their kind of last fight. And even though in Batman's mind, he's planned, okay, this is it. I'm going to kill him. He needs to die. It's been even coming out of whatever state he was in, he just killed people. But well, then he only, doesn't kill him. <laughs> well, not only that, but the whole time Joker's egging him about Jason Todd, right? Right. He's taunting him about, because he sees, cause he sees Gary Kelly as Robin, and then, of course, I think any time Joker can make fun or taunt about anything, especially later when we get to, like, killing Joe, he'll make jokes about Barbara and stuff. It's just, that's just how Joker is. Well, He's that's, just, that's also Batman's, like, one weak point. Right. He's Anything like, oh, dealing with when you failed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you can beat me this time, but I already beat you. Right. Like it's thing. like he'll bring back that guilt that's always inside of him and then yeah. he just goes insane. And then they fight and Batman he pretty much paralyzes him, but he doesn't kill him. He doesn't finish him off. And Joker's I like did. No joke but no, Joker's like he Joker kills himself oh, in a way. Right. It's like he he he's like near death. It's like yeah, he he's, like he's, Bat, a Batman broke his neck or something. Yeah, but, but Joker's still alive. Right, just he's a still little alive. And then he, quadriplegic. Yeah, and then he'll like taunt him and say like, "You couldn't even kill me." And then he kills himself. Oh yeah, that, that's right. He uses the last <laughs> remaining mobility of his right. neck to complete the turn. Exactly. Which I thought it was. And so, of course, Joker's dead, and then the police are after him, so it's like Joker is another laugh, almost, because the police will find him, and they think that he killed Joker. And and I like just the panel where after Joker kills himself, Batman just kind of sits there, because he's injured because Joker has stabbed him in the stomach, and he's hurt, and it's like you see them both just kind of sitting there in a really... <laughs> He just look awful. Joker's dead, and Batman's like, uh, "I'm just gonna sit here for a minute because he needs to. <laughs> exactly, he's, he's not the spry chicken he once was. <laughs> it's like he's like uh, his age caught up to him. Even so, right. it's just so. I think that that's a great Batman Joker. Just look at their relationship, even though. Joker dies and you don't really see that anywhere else. And that's always one of the big questions that like, why doesn't he just kill Joker? I mean, he has killed all these people and he deserves to die because he's just a horrible person. But so you see that and then you kind of are we kind of shift almost to because Batman escapes the police who come into the fair and then him and Robin go off and then he gets healed at the Batcave and all of that, and then you kind of are introduced in a way or see more of Superman. And his role kind of comes in, and you see that he's part of the... He's like a secret agent, in a sense, of the U.S. government, well, yeah, he's in just, a way. He's like a company man. Like, the president is like, right. you're, you're, under, you're under our flag, son. And he's like, oh, I think it's supposed to be Ronald Reagan. But, yeah, tech, pretty much. But he's it's, like, you know, hey, son, you gotta, you gotta do what's right for the country. And I, I think... At, at 
for some reason they get they get notice of Gotham of what's going on in Gotham and they're like Superman you got to go take care of it right which is crazy because why didn't they call Superman when the mutants were going crazy because that was that was mundane yeah <laughs> that's just regular straight killing but when you've got a vigilante <laughs> out there it's, yeah that's where it's apparently London, why problem. did they call why, why what was the difference well i think the biggest difference was when it all stopped 10 years ago that superman had to be the one and they all all the superheroes like they he says diana's a wonder woman and they all kind of made a pact that we're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to be these vigilantes or these rogue heroes that aren't a part of the system. And so I think that's why. And of course, Superman and Batman and all of them have that relationship. Right. So I think it was more Superman has to go talk to Batman because I'm sure the president's like, well, you guys are you have that dynamic. You're so, friends. Yeah, you're friends. Pretty much it's like telling your friend, okay, you need to stop. <laughs> well, he's also like, if anyone can put him out, it's you. It Exactly. So if, if there's... Your friend's out of, of control. <laughs> go, go take care of it. I want you to talk to him. That kind of thing. And even looking at Superman visually, I like looking at him, especially the panel where he's oh, just out in the field. And, and all the, women. And then there's like an eagle that is on his arm. Right. And it's so like, you just need the American flag waving in the background. And you're like, oh, well, that's... That's Superman. So just the imagery itself is and then awesome. This is, uh, not to get too far off topic, but this is at least a lot of elements. This this conflict is, is mm-hmm. playing out in the new movie, right? Like, yes. It, and that's mostly, or I think what everyone is turning to, so anyone who hasn't read it yet, book four is what a lot of people are looking towards for Batman vs. Superman, Dawn well, of the Justice. the costumes look very similar. Oh, definitely. Uh Batman's suit is heavily influenced off of of Miller's suit, the Ben Affleck suit. I mean, yeah. bat suit looks. And then, of course, when you see the armored suit in the trailers, that armored suit looks just like the one that you see in Book Four. So, yeah. and of course, it's Batman versus Superman. So you're like, okay, you have the suit, and everything is influenced from Miller. It's Batman versus Superman. So is it gonna is the fight gonna be like this, or what elements are they gonna take? How are they gonna do it? And I, th- I think that's the biggest question that people have with this story. Now, also, you just talked about influences. They did a animated Dark Knight, didn't they? Yes. And, yeah. And how does that? I I haven't seen it. It's great. Oh yeah, they have. It's a part how, one and part two. How yeah. close okay. is it to? It's pretty, pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. dead on. Yeah. yeah. Do they have the media playing a major role in that? Yes, yeah. they do. Ooh, oh, yeah. No, awesome. they literally it's, took the comics like yeah. storyboards. It's like almost like word for, yeah. <laughs> for word and, in a sense. And, and do you have it, London? <laughs> yes. Well, can I borrow it? <laughs> we have it on digital. Uh, uh, you, I can, can't. you can sign in under her well, name. Uh, yeah. You didn't illegally download it, did no, you? No. Okay. iTunes. Okay. But... <laughs> So, so no, we have the clear si- legal HD. <laughs> yeah. Side question for you. Yes. I know you defended Kevin Conroy, who is my personal favorite. Yes. However, uh, in in the Dark Knight Returns animated series, it was Peter Weller. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts? Ah, uh, hmm. You know that because I thought it would be Kevin Conroy, and I was like, "Why is this Kevin Conroy?" I mean, don't get me wrong; I think he did a good job. But no, I wasn't did, it Kevin Conroy. Right? That would have been that would have been perfect. I just, but I just don't understand. But he did fit really well. Just no, the voice, and yeah, he totally brought that. And you can tell he was just that older Batman that you kind of. But yeah, I de- mm-hmm. But but then again, I think about like shows like Batman Beyond where. He's Bruce Kevin Wayne, Conroy. and he's and he's older there too. So it's like, well, why couldn't we just do that? Yeah, I don't know. But, Contracts. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I I wasn't part. But of no, casting, seriously, but... Adam, like you should totally check it out. It's awesome. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm looking to buy it right now. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, it, it is really good. Right. It is. Yeah. I remember when I saw it. We were I was at my friend's house, and we were bored. It was like 2 a.m. on a Saturday, and we were just like, man, what are we gonna do? This is so lame and boring. <laughs> And we found it at, on um, 
I don't know if it was Netflix or what, but we found it. And we were just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Silence in the room while we watched it. And we were oh, like, this I wonder is, if it this is, is awesome. Netflix. Like, And it, we high-fived each other. See, it's not on Netflix right now. Right now, it's not yeah, on Netflix. It was no. maybe there for a while. Yeah, but anyway. but no, it's it's a really good adaptation. So yeah, fans I, of I think fans of the comic, I don't think we're disappointed. No, with... I I think that's the new standard that they're going to hold Killing Joke to. Yes, I, I I think so too. I think if it's if it's a little off from the book, people are going to be like, "What?" I will be the second <laughs> the second part of Dark Knight Returns animated was a little different. A little it, bit, it was. I like the first part because it it really followed the first part. The I books thought were like <laughs> every, everything that I loved about the first book. All those feelings I thought that I was talking about, mm-hmm. they, 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 they they captured it. The animated definitely. the animated version captured it almost perfectly. And I was yes. just like, oh, this it, is great. It really showed Bruce Wayne's struggle with being Batman and yeah. and all of those feelings that he had in the yeah. comic showed oh, it really yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so if you haven't seen it, it's yeah, it's out two part. Yeah, it's a two part uh, movie. It's really good, really faithful to the books. So, so I, Adam, you should watch. I it. will. <laughs> yeah, <can> quiz me <laughs> next time. All right, so we're real quick. Where are we now on we're, the original Dark Knight? We're comics. Pretty much on book four, which is the Dark Knight Falls, which is I think out of. Well, I, I don't know. I would think that it's now more the iconic book out of the four, even though I think the cover to issue one where he's in the sky with the lightning, I think yeah, visually jumping. is that. I think visually is more iconic. But the fact that Superman and Batman fight in this issue, it and I think that's why it's more popular right now because people want to know, hmm, that's going to happen next year in a movie, so I have to see what. So I think that's why... Dark Knight Returns at this time is being popular or is popular by fans and the fact that the Dark Knight 3 is coming out next week. So it it all it all makes it relevant. <laughs> but you I, see I that. am going to be curious about how they handle the fight because in Dark Knight Returns they cheesed a little in my opinion. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But for the most part, you see how Superman becomes weakened because he has to divert this missile that was launched by the Soviet Union and that literally still cuts out communication everywhere and he doesn't and he isn't exposed to the sunlight, which gives him power. So he literally almost dies, but then he gets his power he gets his power back, he but he sucks a, but, solar power. Yeah, he from sucks. A flower. Yes, oh, exactly. And like, it's like, what? okay, right? It's like the sunflower is like, oh, and then yeah, like what? It's like, oh, like okay. I can just <laughs> absorb sunlight from plants. I, you know, fine. Right, so it's like a little cheesy. It's, fine. So it's like it's okay, but so he doesn't die. That was mostly for that. Right, so, sure. but right now he's weak in a sense and then batman and then meanwhile <laughs> batman gathers up the the sons of batman who are really violent and who are still killing people and he's like no we don't do that we're not killers and he doesn't he tells him not to use the guns that were given to him by like a rogue leader and all that stuff and they are helping Gotham more now than being these random vigilantes and people are and for some reason that's like an embarrassment to the government that Batman's helping Gotham when he was this crazy vigilante. Well I think it showed that they because they couldn't do it. Right because they couldn't handle it they couldn't fix it but Batman and these random people to them can so then of course he's so then they're like okay Superman you need to take out Batman and so Superman asks Batman, where do you want to meet? And of course, where does he want to meet? Crime Alley. Because yeah. why not? Why would you want to fight where your parents were murdered? That's, of course, you know. So It gets a little, it gets him a little hometown. <laughs> exactly. He's like, no, I want to play. I want to do it here. So, so they meet in Crime Alley. And, but, but Batman is prepared <laughs> and he gets a heads up. From Oliver Queen, who is who was Green Arrow, and he's retired, but he only has one arm and is 
is just, yeah, he's really retired. <laughs> but he gives him a heads up that Superman is coming for him. And so he wants to help him fight Superman. So he has help from Ollie. And then he builds this armored exoskeleton over his suit. And, of course, he has the Batmobile tank. And then Carrie Kelly's there because yeah, she can help. Sure. Even though Morale. it's like, you know, it's a boost, of course. And so he has all of this ready, and then he has this pill that you're like, ooh, what's that? And so, you, and then he goes up against Superman. He knows he's weakened from the missile crisis in a way. And then they have this fight, and Batman is getting in blows, and Superman. And I always am interested when people use this fight as, oh, that's why Batman can be anybody, because. I feel like Batman prepped a lot for this moment and Superman was weak and technically Superman was holding back in the fight because Superman never wants to fight Batman. Anytime they have to clash, but Superman's like, I don't want to do this. You don't want to do this, Bruce. We should do this. Right. He always tries to talk him out yeah, of it. Yeah, he tries to talk him out of it because he doesn't. Cause... Good for him. <laughs> well, yeah, well, he's the Boy Scout. I mean, but it's also, he's he's kind of practical about it. Oh, yeah, there's oh. no way around it. Like, oh, he, no. You know, he, don't, I mean, don't make me destroy you. Exactly. Which is interesting because <laughs> he sees the bigger picture of, I, you know, Batman's good to have in Gotham. Let him play in that little playground. <laughs> he can come help with the Justice League. But, you know, Bruce, if you're going to step up, I'm going to swat you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's always how the conversation but goes. But Bruce is like, no, man, I'm, I, I can do it if I just focus. You know, it's ridiculous. Well, he does have certain tactical advantages when he puts his mind to it right but, but and, and of course in this but not in this series not when he wants to just go fight the mutant leader without any backup plan well yeah but but no this is after that so he's he's no, so, yeah but but of course yeah that first fight he he gets no I destroyed know, I know, I know. but yeah so of course this fight so he I know, I know. definitely yeah. has the upper hand and even though Superman can see that Bruce at the moment is is literally dying. It's almost like he has that armored suit and everything, but still just slowly with every punch and everything Superman throws at him, he's literally dying. His body cannot take it. I to repeat what you said. It's a horrible example of Batman versus Superman. I know people like to use this as the iconic Batman versus Superman moment, but Superman's literally just absorb the energy from a nuclear missile. He doesn't have access to sunlight. He gets basically uh, cheated out of by, by hitting, getting hit with uh, kryptonite. Right, and kryptonite. then Ollie's kryptonite arrow hold- hits him, and then it's like, oh. He's, hold- he's holding back completely, <laughs> and he's getting shot at by Carrie Kelly in a tank while he's fighting back. Yeah, him. it's just all of... The elements around Superman, even though he's Superman, it's all against him, but it's all planned out perfectly. And, and, he, and he gives a warning. He doesn't just show up and fight Right. Him. He mean, says where, where. And then he's like, I want to go to Crime Alley. So it's like he already, it's there's prep time. And I mean, if Superman wanted, he could have just, you know, flown up two, two miles in the air and taken him out from space with his uh, Right. Exactly. Vision. If he does the heat vision and, and spells out where, why couldn't he just go a little bit further and just zap Batman and just call it a day? He can if he wants to. <laughs> if, he, if he wants to kill Batman or, or really mostly anyone, he can. So... But with all of everything against him, the kryptonite arrow and the, just be him being weak and then Batman pummels him and and then once he's literally just out, Batman has a heart attack and falls over and, and dies. When uh, <laughs> Batman and Superman have the conversation about Ollie and Superman says, I didn't want it to go that way. Is that implying that Superman is the one who took Ollie's arm? That's what I think. Maybe other people or whatever yeah. the situation was that just no, I, it, no, I, it, it totally it was implied to me because he would when he's like when he goes to Batman and he's like, I want to help, right? And he's like, This is why I want to help take that guy down because of this, right? So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the reason why. So it's which alone shows that Superman. <laughs> <laughs> if he wanted to, he could take him out. But at the end of 
pretty much at the end of the book, Bruce Wayne slash Batman is dead. The world finds out, oh, Bruce Wayne's Batman. That secret's revealed. And they show the funeral and everything. And then you see Carrie Kelly there kind of disguised. But then Superman is at the funeral as well. And, of course, him being Superman, he hears a very faint heartbeat. And he knows. And then he looks over and he can see Carrie Kelly. And he's like, okay. So he knows that Bruce took some pill, which he's done in comics before, which I find is hilarious. Like the first time he's taken something to either slow down his heart rate or make it seem like he's dead, that happened in like the 50s. This is like, this is the first time he's done it. So it's it's just another classic Batman tactic, which I find in the end is, is kind of funny. So he comes beyond the grave and he builds this own underground system with his son's a Batman and he trains them and he's going to have them be kind of like those Batman and he's not going to go out himself anymore and he creates this whole underground system and he says he was trying to look for a great death but this will be a better life and that and so those four issues that really is the the Dark Knight Returns, which is, of course, iconic for a lot of reasons. But the major one, I think, is that it really was a comic that adults, I think, for people who were older, it wasn't just for for kids. And and of course, with that and then Alan Moore's Watchmen, yeah, I, I think, saw a tremendous similarities between yeah, the two. And in those, I think those were the two that kind of made the term graphic novel happen in a way. They kind of it weren't just comic books. They weren't just you know I was always drawings. Yeah, when I got it, when I got into comics, they I was told that the three the top three examples of comics as literature, not just yes. like funny papers. It yeah, was Dark exactly. Knight Returns. Not just like comic strips Watchmen, like, and, Watchmen, yes, and, Watchmen and, and Sandman. Yeah, definitely. So, of course, this arc is important because it it introduced more of the graphic novel sense. It had it was more of comic for adults, and even the it even introduced Comic Sans, the font, and just all these different elements. And even though it's an Elseworld type book, it's an alternate universe book. It was a great representation. Well, hold up, of Batman. did you say Dark Knight Returns introduced Comic Sans? Yeah. What? It influenced, yeah, the Comic Sans. What? Yeah. The font? The font. Yes, the font. That's, that where, you, it, that's yeah. where it originated? Yeah. What? <laughs> that just blew my mind. <laughs> Are you serious? No, serious. Why? Were they officially going away from hand lettering or something? No, it just, it was that and it was that's another crazy. book. But yeah, the that that intro and I think that's where the whole graphic novel thing kind of came into play because if you introduce a type of font, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like okay, well, yeah, yeah. So it just that issue, those four issues, of course, are it just was groundbreaking for comics in a sense, and it was a great, it's a great Batman story, and I always find that even though it's one of the greatest, it's said greatest Batman stories, it's an alternate universe, it's an Earth Realm, which is another reason why I don't think that people should use this Batman fight as the Batman versus Superman, because technically, it's on Earth 31, it's not in the regular continuity, I'm just saying, but I'm sure Busted. people, I'm, I know, people are gonna, like, write emails and be mad at me, <laughs> but, yeah, so that was that story, and then we have a little less than 15 years later, and then you go to the sequel, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to fly solo on this because I, I never read it. <laughs> My friends picked it up, looked at the art, and literally dropped it and walked yeah, away. Yeah, and the biggest thing with that is just Klaus Jansen was not the inker. Well, he also this. drew some misshapen characters <laughs> as well. I mean, his, his attention to detail <sighs> might have been a little different. Maybe he was trying to convey mood more than detail oh you don't think so Mace? <laughs> i think that's awesome that's, i'm sure that's what it was yeah you, you know that is then what else would it be no i think you're exactly correct i, I think that's awesome i hadn't thought of that and i agree 100 you know well, rude yeah 
Well, there was a big there was a big thing about that. So, you know, he 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 didn't really care about you know drawing it the proper way, doing it in proportion. Mm-hmm. He wanted to get you to just totally freak out on the whole image itself and be bugged out by that. And yeah, well, I think people lost sight of what was actually happened. Cause I, I got to say, I didn't read it either. Oh, but, hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> after. Yeah. But wait, didn't Kelly Jones back that up? Right, like he he said that he doesn't really care about the details of the panel. Yeah, either. like he he kind of goes he, with the mood. With the right, so and and I think when you read the story, so this came out in late 2001 and then lasted through 2000 like mid 2002 even though it's only three issues it's just timing and putting it out was kind of slow um but yeah it was frank miller he wrote it he penciled it he inked it and then lynn valley came back and did colors and i personally and i usually don't throw out opinion but i i love frank miller as a writer but if he's the sole artist like the main pencil inker that is not the strongest point and <laughs> no I, I think I think the last thing that he did very well and it this style lent to, his style lent to that was the Sin City stuff yes because he could everything was so dark everything right. was in the shadows he didn't have to draw it up it was that talk about mood that was all mood, and right. that's kind of where I also get the idea about his, you know, Batman Strikes Again is, you know, he just didn't use the shadows like that. It was still mm-hmm. to get a mood. Mm-hmm. The Sin City was the culmination or the pinnacle of that type of style. Right. But, Right. You know. The art was, of course, if you compare Dark Knight Returns to Dark Knight Strikes Again, the art is different and even just the format because you don't have that kind of prestige paneling. You have more one, you have more splash pages and more just, and it's the story itself. I think it gets a little crazy in the end, but you get to see more characters, which I like because usually with Dark Knight Returns, we have Batman and we see a little bit of Two Face and then we see a little bit of Joker and then we see Superman and we see Carrie Kelly, but you get to see more of the Justice League. And it's kind of at this point where, at least time wise, even though it's a little less than 15 years later, time wise, it's three years after Batman Bruce Wayne dies. So it's three years after the fight that he has with Superman and he has this. And he has like these net, these network kind of his, still his sons of Batman, and he still has Carrie Kelly, but she is not Robin. She is Catgirl. She's kind of like in this leopard print uh, what? cat suit. Yeah, Why? she's <laughs> because was well, Selena Kyle not a- around? Well, if Batman's dead, don't you think maybe she's dead too? So when. So you'll see that when you first see Carrie Kelly, she's in normal clothes. But then her persona is Catgirl. She's not Robin. So that's that's something that the fans weren't too happy about. That's my, it's like that's she's my in official a, response. <laughs> it's like she's in a full uh, she's in a full cat suit, and she even has like tennis shoes on. And it's just it's <laughs> oh, a no. whole like big shout out to Meltdown Comics as always because <laughs> I just went. Into okay. the he literally <laughs> just went into the store and, and just got yeah. a copy. I mean, that's the benefit of it. Yeah, that's yeah. It's, it's recorded it's, live at Melting. <laughs> but yeah, you can look at there the. There you go. Yeah. Oh. See. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. 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 <laughs> she's like Tigra. From, yeah. uh, from Tell me that's not a mood that's being <laughs> drawn right there. Yeah. Well, that's definitely Frank Miller. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that, but that is something you can say about Frank Miller's work. You can place it anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I love the Wonder Woman with a Jerry curl. <laughs> yeah. How does that happen? That's I awesome. love uh, he, the Captain Marvel with the chin like a square. <laughs> or the reading glasses. Oh, I mean, yeah. if you have superpowers, don't you think your eyes would? No. <laughs> it, you know, old age. No, not even magic beats old age. <laughs> Wow, this is but, crazy, man. But in a general sense, Batman she, uh, like has to. <laughs> this looks like she's pooping. Like, I don't even. All right. I'm, Stop I'm, it. Well, no, the bottom of her shoes are these like little brown. 
Oh, they're roller skates. I got it. Okay. Yeah. It's All right, never mind. It's very different than uh <laughs> than her uh Robin. But and I think just the fact that you guys are looking at the art, it to- you, you don't even want to know what the story is, right? Aren't I you actually just kind would of, love to know. Would what you is love this? to know what the story is? Cuz I'm not even reading this. Well, I know, but it's like the art is almost in a way distracting from the it, inter- the intricacies of the know, story. This is interesting, <laughs> London, real quick, because I know yeah. you love pop. I know yes. you love pop art, and this is very pop art It style. is. So it is very pop by art. All, by That's all why when rights, we were talking should, about uh, Sin City and the shadows and that, yeah. this is the complete opposite, because those colors are bright and out there, and everything is just bam. Yeah. Well, also, totally you, you see the dots of the of the. Well, that's also the, that's the cover. Oh. All right. I mean, well, but that know. is. But I do agree, at least... The palette itself is, even though there are, it, there it's still dark in a sense. But Frank Miller's style is, it has so much more of a cartoonish feel to yeah, it. No, you're it's right. There's kinda, very little shadows. Yeah, it's not as many. Uh, are you going to get to the part where Superman and Wonder Woman hook up in the sky? Yeah, and the thing is that in takes up and the thing that takes up like five oh pages. Oh my god. <laughs> it does. God. If you look at it, it takes up like full five pages, right? Yeah. There's like one, two you know what? like the, them the cave. Go, yeah. Go you man. I mean I'm getting the impression off yeah, these images it's like that five it, pages. It is of, it's five full splash full pages. Splash pages of Superman and Wonder Woman getting it on. And it's like, is that necessary? Well, I it, don't know. I, think I it's don't the, know. It, I'm getting the but, impression from these images that it's the culmination of years of frustration <laughs> that they've been wanting secretly eyeing each other i guess lois lane is gone dot 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 question mark it, it, yeah in this and superman steve, and steve major <laughs> uh, no longer around <laughs> but in this but but it's funny because in this story it's lex luther and brainiac they are the brainiac's leaders. no joke yeah so but they have superman and wonder woman kind of blackmailed so they have them doing their bidding in a sense, <laughs> and then they were like, "Hook up," right? And the thing is that are they, you serious? That's what happened. Kind of, what? and then, but then he tells them that, and then Wonder Woman gets pregnant, <laughs> and then like Lex, you know what though? She's the only one that could bear his child. Yeah, it makes sense though, right? I'm gonna it knock d- you out with my super sperm. I'm gonna do it. I'm Dude, gonna do I it. Read... I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do say... it. Do it. You know that's from, it... right? <laughs> delight. Oh man. <laughs> I read a long time ago an essay called Alien Sex, Mm -hmm. and it was about why Superman could never have children. And the idea is that because, and one of one of the ideas is because, so normally when a man uh, ejaculates, it it comes out very forcefully in order to ensure the best chances of reaching the egg. So Mm -hmm. Superman would literally be faster than bullets, (laughs) so you you would be destroyed. But that's why him and Lois couldn't. In a, right. In well, a, they, in a way, yeah, I mean, they, uh, well, they, that has are, come tech- up before in uh, Superman and and Lois love right, story. That's another. Anyway. Well, the, wait, let's get let's get to <laughs> he became get human to for a while, right? And, all right, whatever. Let's, that's let's different strike topic, again. Different topic. And stay on topic because we uh We're we out. are running up on. The I time know, here. and I know Sorry. that we went into a lot of detail with the Dark Knight Returns, but we can kind of. Just in a summarize, yeah, us summarize strikes, strikes again. So, like I said, Lex Luthor is in control of of Superman, Wonder Woman, and Captain Marvel, as you saw in there with the with the Surge. and and so they and and there are certain heroes that are kind of locked up, or they have to. So, Batman and and Carrie Kelly is is Catgirl have to rescue heroes like the Flash, so you get to see the Flash in there. They have to rescue Plastic Man, and then all the while they're doing this and trying to fight against Lex Luthor's regime and Superman. There's this Joker-like character that's just randomly killing people. It looks like the Joker, but it's not because you know that the Joker died. And so it's like a copycat. So yeah, it's kind of like a copycat. And so when he fights other superheroes, he like wears their costumes after. It's very odd. But it's not Joker, but it's someone who is acting like the Joker. And so in a sense, once Superman and Wonder Woman, they and I think that's the reason why there's a five page spread. Of- 
of them because she ends up pregnant and mm. so and so of course Lex doesn't care and so now they go on the side of Batman and Catgirl to tie, to to take down Lex and then so there's Batman there's Flash there's Plastic Man and they have to go up against Brainiac and his whole regime to 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 stop them and so Batman has to come out publicly so he comes back into the public eye after three years of technically being dead and everyone knows that Batman is Bruce Wayne so it's kind of but it's so they come and they and then oddly enough in the last book um, Batman he finds out who this like Joker character is and it's like a, a weird version of Dick Grayson what? <laughs> yeah. Like the Red Hood version? Well, no, wait, that wasn't Dick Grayson. That was, that was Jason, Jason Todd. Todd. But no, but, Spoiler. <laughs> but it's it's Dick Grayson. He's now like insane. And so they have like this weird <sighs> argument over him being Robin and then their father son relationship. And they have, and then they fight in this like whole thing of lava. And it's just, it's a really crazy story. But it sounds crazy. It is. It's a little much compared to if if and I know you probably shouldn't, but since it's within the same universe, comparing how the Dark Knight Returns was laid out in story and art and just all of that, and then going to this three issue book, I'm not sure where the art and the story they both are kind of bam right there in your face but it doesn't really flow as well you could argue yeah it's very jarring just hearing about it yeah a lot of things the characters and just what happens in there and just how and yeah the design and all of it even just the simple fact of changing carrie kelly's look and maybe because i don't know is she is, does she feel like oh does she have a Nightwing moment where she was like I don't want to be Robin anymore I want to be an adult and wear a cat suit I don't know uh, I, liter- I literally <laughs> think they were like hey Cat Catwoman wasn't in the last one do something I, I think that my, that's my guess so how okay are we basically done with that in a, in a, in a way okay. it's I, 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 sorry go on I just have one question how was this received oh negatively. Okay. The, yeah, it was the critique was was bad. People didn't think that the art and the story went well, or they felt that the story could 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 be received well, but the art was just too. Like I said, it was almost too distracting. It didn't flow together, and that and and if you compare it to well, to DKR, it's just yeah. And here's some interesting. Just reading from the back of the uh, graphic novel, you know how on quotes right if you're taking a quote from a review Uh, yeah you'd like to hear things like the most amazing batman story ever told (laughs) essential batman reading for anyone these are some of the quotes so from ign it's interesting to see miller's take on classic dc characters placed (laughs) in a future context and in a world that has lost hope in heroes <laughs> it's very a matter of fact right yeah here's some here's another one this this is from usa today oh no i'm sorry let me do uh, publishers weekly this revision of an iconic character the sequel to miller's dark knight returns has been one of the comics publishing's most anticipated events <laughs> it doesn't even talk about the event. End of quote. It's it just like the anticipated event. That's really tough. And I wonder if it's just my reading it too. Could I make it more exciting? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. It's too, there's right. too, it's too long. Well, here's Entertainment Weekly. His brutal yet elegant noir renderings, pulpy yet eloquent scripting, and thoroughly uncompromising attitude make him one of the most distinctive voices in comics. Now, is that actually that's that's, that's not that's reviewing Frank Miller, not the book. Yeah. All right. So I was he, gonna say that's a that's, good one. Yeah, actually, but, but I think Miller. that's yeah. more just Frank Miller, yeah. just him, his style. 
<laughs> All right, well, then it's up to USA Today. <laughs> Let's see what USA has to say. Oh, man. Miller has pulled off a triumphant return to Gotham. Whoa. Sure-footed, chilling, prescient, witty, and sometimes laugh out loud funny. Oh. Uh... Mm, sounds, sounds that's like a, very positive. Sounds like a thumbs up. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's a... Way to go, USA Today. Yeah. Same in the day. I think if you look at the book and not have The Dark Knight Returns next to it, if you just look at it by itself and you know, okay, That'd it's within this. To, to go get the back of The Dark Knight Returns and read the right, quotes off those... that. <laughs> and see what, see what they, it'll be like, I masterful. <laughs> Master perfection. The greatest. All right, hold on one second. <laughs> All right. Because this story is you can read it. So it's, wait, it's are they readable. are they doing anything in an effort for DK3 or whatever to like go against like That's the thing we don't know. I don't know if they're going to pull any of this yeah. into the concluding story <laughs> or if they're just going to look at DKR and yeah. just ignore that this happened. I have no idea. All right, big up okay. Meltdown Comics because it's in stock. So come nice. on down and buy it. Come on down and get it while you can. So here it is, The Dark Knight Returns, the first one. This is praise for The Dark Knight Returns. This is from Stephen King. Nice. I Probably like the finest piece of comic art ever published in a popular edition. Boom. There you Drop go. Drop the mic, Stephen King. <laughs> and Mickey Spillane. I, this is actually kind of a weak one, but it just says, this guy is good. Well, it's Mickey Spillane. Yeah. <laughs> for, for people who don't know, he, he, he um, I think Sam Spade, that was him, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, there you go. That, uh, those are, They only had two reviews on that. I would have probably done the two reviews from the, uh, for the, the Maybe second. they had to give yeah. more reviews for the other one because they're like, before you open it, yeah. right. <laughs> let's That's true. prepare uh, yeah. yourself. So, so, <laughs> so Bruce Wayne, you mentioned, is dead in the, right? Well, he, yeah, plays dead. So, so to the world, he's dead. Okay. But then, of course, in in Dark Knight Rides again, Batman comes back into public view with Catgirl and right. to go up against Brainiac and and Lex Luthor. And so, I like the fact that you get to see a lot of different characters from the DC universe within the Dark Knight Strikes Again. So yeah. that. I think is a plus if he, for people who like to see stories so, with a lot of different. So you saw the preview panels, I'm sure, of DK3. Right. And it has him riding a motorcycle. Yeah. It's it's funny because they, ha- they showed a few panels, but you still can't put it in a context to work with. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. With. Can you put that in a context? Yeah, that's the thing. And that's why I felt, I felt that for this episode, the way to prepare for DK3, especially since at least with context, we're not really sure. You should read the two books that are, that are, sub- so you don't know how much of the Dark Knight Strikes Again is going to be in well, DK3. You don't know. What's the art style like in the panels that you've seen? Is it closer to? Oh, it's awesome. It's oh, yeah. Adam It's uh, Yeah, it's Klaus Janssen it and Andy, 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 Andy Kubert. Andy. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so the art is outstanding. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's and, they, sick. and they and they use little panels, sort of like the uh, yeah the first one. The formatting is a lot like Dark Knight Returns, definitely. Mm, it's beautiful. <laughs> it cool. is. So I'm already excited because the art is really nice. It right. is. So and Frank Miller doesn't have full control. So if anyone's <laughs> oh bless you, if anyone's bless you. worried about that, which I don't think you need to be, but not if with you this are, series. I think with however, and they're going to have different rotating artists for the mini comics. But yeah, I think with 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 this creative team, I don't think you need to worry. And Frank Miller and Brian Azzarello are, are writing it, so I'm. I think the writing and the art itself, I think it's going to be great. I'm just curious to know what's going to happen. All right. <laughs> All right. So predictions around the table. Shadow Adam. <laughs> yes, sir. DK3. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be great? Give me your prediction. I think with the creative teams involved, um, you've got Jim Lee overseeing it. He even did a uh, variant cover. And you've got um, other writers involved. I don't. I don't think DC is going to let this fail. <laughs> okay, good prediction, Mason. 
Do you have any prediction? Yeah, I, I would say that based off of everything I've heard, um, <laughs> the D- Dark Knight 2 was so low that they, they're they trying to ensure a, re- a recovery. So I, mm-hmm. I think they're, I think they're going it, to, it's got to be better. It's got to be better, in my opinion. Okay. Now, <laughs> London. Here's what I, uh, you're, this is a little bit different because you're okay. always positive. <laughs> so I imagine that you're thinking it's going to be good. Yes. My question is this. Will it reach close to The Dark Knight Returns, the first one? No. Okay. And I don't say that because I don't have faith in this new uh, or this creative team, but I think just... When the book came out and when the issues came out and what it did for comics and what it did for Batman, it, it's a lot to follow. I don't right. think people should try to say, oh, this is going to be better than uh, than Dark Knight Returns or try to make it equal. I right. just I I am interested to see Superman's role in it. And since that was such a big deal within both of the books, with both the Dark Knight Returns, Dark Knight Strikes Again, uh, but I I am optimistic about it, and I do think with the with the art itself, it's already beautiful, and I'm I'm curious as to how they're going to conclude it because they they do call it a conclusion, so this is it. This is it. So I'm wondering how that's going to be. I'm wondering what Carrie Kelly's role is if if she's in it at all, which I would assume she is. If they made her cat girl in Dark Knight Strikes Again, they should. Bring <laughs> they yeah. should bring her back, and and I don't know as as what necessarily well, cat, cat woman. <laughs> that would be that would be nice. That would be interesting. A new version of Catwoman. So but, you're you're excited. So I, I the way I interpret what you're saying is this is going to be a very very solid story, and it yes. may be one of the better Batman miniseries ever. Mm-hmm. However, it will not have the social impact and strength and power of the initial Dark Knight yes. Returns. Yes, yes, I think I think, that I think that's fair. I think that's right? fair. That's I, I do. A... I think that it's fair because the the first one, no one no one had ever seen anything like it before. Exactly. And now you have seen something like it before. So right, you no, know, right. Try and beat it. Yeah. So I think it's just them trying to give this universe, which is Frank Miller's Batman universe, just a little bit of closure, finality okay. and All right. just yeah. All right, cool. Now I got some <laughs> other top I got some other questions though that I have to ask. Okay. So with regards to the best Batman stories ever, is the Dark Knight Returns the best Batman story, in your opinion? In my opinion, mm, I don't think it's my number one. Is it number? It's in my. It will. It's for sure in my top ten. But oh, it's boy. not your favorite. But it's not. It's not my favorite. My personal favorite. No. It's. But it is. It is worthy of being in a top ten best Batman She's story. Top ten. Yeah. Oh, Maybe top five. I say for sure top ten because I know it would be in the top ten. Top five. I'm not sure. But I do think. <laughs> what? <laughs> but is, I do. This is, this is Elseworlds. I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> what? Not not in the top five? You have four others. You have five others that are it better. It might be in the top five. Five others. I, you know me. I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that'll be next episode. Yeah, yeah. Can I can pro- it. addendum. I, I, <laughs> look at look at the Instagram for it. Well, because Mason, you actually mentioned that you had read something early on that the three top pieces of comic literature of all true, time true. was Sandman, Watchmen, and, and Dark, Knight, Dark Returns. Knight Returns. And I think that if you take a poll out there. That will pro- those if we're doing a top five, those three would probably yeah. be in the top five. Uh, Yet, but the, that poll is for comics as literature, right? But if there's a better Batman story than Dark Knight Returns, yeah, I don't know because you were going off about Hush hard, and uh, mm-hmm. I've never read Hush, so I'm interested oh. in reading that one. You've also mentioned Long Halloween, which I've also not Long read. Long Halloween is yeah, that's a really but good I Batman hear you. I, I don't know. I think. It, 
I think I think you are right about the cultural impact carries almost more weight than the actual story itself. Yes, the story itself is great. Right. But the cultural impact. Just what it did for the Batman character in comics itself is extraordinary. Yeah. And but I think that's that's one of the reasons why I think it's it is a Batman essential read. If you had to say, oh, what Batman stories read, that's something I definitely right. would recommend, of course. I have a question real quick. So yes. were Batman sales flagging at this point? And and the and, yes. and this resurrected this, it and brought it back? Yes, it did. Very interesting. Yes. Okay. So the Dark Knight, in fact, returned on the marketing <laughs> level as yes, well. Yes, it, it did. All right, so huh. DK3 coming out. <sighs> Get your seatbelts fastened. <laughs> and I cannot wait. Comes out next week, huh? Yeah. Wow, man. I cannot wait next to hear. Wednesday. Are we going to talk about it? Is, is that a spoiler? Is that a spoiler? I was thinking about that. Is well, that a to spoiler? Talk about, no. To talk about DK3? No, like, I, like when it like it comes out Wednesday, so so you could on the show you could read it and then come talk. Yeah, about is it? that a spoiler? Ooh, <laughs> well, well, people get mad. We, you could, yeah. you could, <laughs> you could, we could rig it. We can make a little spoiler. Like, spoiler. We're gonna talk about it. If you don't want to hear it, skip this one. I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Okay, maybe. Maybe. Well, we'll have maybe. to decide. But anyways. <laughs> But yes, bottom line, if you want to get ready for DK3, which comes out November 25th, so next Wednesday, definitely check out The Dark Knight Returns and The Dark Knight Strikes Again. If you have read it before, read it again. Yes. And, and if, if you, you don't have it, come to Meltdown yes, Comics. Yes, come to Meltdown Comics. We have it right here. Yes. <laughs> In stock. In stock. London can sign your copy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> we've, got, we've got the new studio. She can do a signing in the studio. Oh, my yeah. goodness. We have a new Meltdown <laughs> podcast studio. Which is awesome. We're really excited. like to shout out Francisco, the general manager of Meltdown. This man basically built this thing by with hand. his bare hands. <laughs> Francisco, thank Francisco you so did much. It. He's yes. the man. You are Francisco the man. Awesome. It's much appreciated, and you deserve Full shout outs and, you know, buy Francisco a round of beer if you see him out. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. Yeah. So hopefully people go out and and read these two arcs, especially if they're excited for Dark Knight 3, The Master Race. People are even trying to figure out what the title means. It's just there's a lot of mystery behind this book, which is odd because... At this point, you usually know at least in general what the book's about, but you still don't know. Wasn't the gang in the first one weren't they kind of hinting that they were the new master race, the mutants? Yeah, in a sense, it could be a new uprising in the book. That's definitely that's definitely a possibility. All right. Well, there's all all kinds of possibilities. (laughs) Stop asking questions, Mason. I think we should debate for another forty-five minutes. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Off air, my friend. Off air. I'm done. All right. Well, thank you all for listening to the History of the Batman with London. We really appreciate Mason sitting in today. He is our producer and engineer, and it's always a pleasure to hear his voice when he chirps in. I'll, so. be, I'll be back for No Man's Land. No Man's Land. And also, I just also <laughs> like to let everyone know that I mentioned a bunch of podcasts that the Meltdown Network has, and you should clearly check them out meltcomics.com we're also uh being hosted by audio boom which is not only a website but a fantastic phone app so you can easily find your podcast there just type in meltdown and the list of podcasts come in but mason has a podcast that he's working on right now yeah called Woo-hoo. anime attic anime attic <laughs> check it out if you if you're a fan of anime uh, we we go deep into the attic and blow the dust off of old and forgotten anime nice. and bring it back into the light of day. Yeah, so <laughs> if you actually have some anime that you'd like to see discussed, then you should email him at mason at meltcomics.com. Yeah, hit, hit, hit me up. We're always looking for, for new uh, show ideas. We're, we're putting together our library right now. And if you are interested in old school hip hop, and yes. awesome artistry. You should check out Adam's podcast oh. on some hip hop ish. Ish. Ish is the hip hop way to say that word.
All right. <laughs> Which is coming out. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully by uh, the time you're listening to this, it'll also be available. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you all for listening. Tune in next week. And London. Peace, love, and Batman. <laughs> <laughs>